Thank you, Elsie Davenport. Got the green light. So I'd like to call this meeting to order. Members of the public are advised that our meetings are webcast live by the City of Hamilton and temporarily archived on the city's website. As a reminder, a reminder of all that all electronic devices are to be switched to a non-audible function during committee meetings. I'll now commence a roll call. So please indicate your presence when I call your name. Councillor Collins. Councillor Farr. Pre I'm present, Mr. Chairman. Oh, there you are. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Farr. Yeah, present. I don't have e-scribe though, so I'll be voting by hand. Thank you. Thank you for the notice. Councillor Ferguson. Present. Councillor Jackson. Here. <laughs> Councillor Marula, Vice Chair. Present. Councillor Nan. Good afternoon, present. Councillor Pauls. Glad to be here. Councillor Pearson. Thank you, President and Mr. Chairman. Just um, want to advise you and my council colleagues that at three o'clock I have another virtual meeting to skip out to to development in my ward, and I'll come back as soon as I can. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Vanderbeek and Councillor Whitehead. My describe still not working. We'll look for your uh, <laughs> vote by show of hands, then. Um, hopefully, we can get you connected. Thank you. Okay, item one, approval of the agenda. Madam Clerk, are there any changes to the agenda? Yes, Mr. Chair, there are changes to the agenda. We have an added delegation request, uh, item 5.1, Kevin Vandermeulen and Roman Kuruk from the Hamilton Cycling Committee respecting a motion on the development of cycling infrastructure, and that is for a future meeting. We also have a change to the order of items, items 10.1 and 10.2 respecting Ward 7 and 8 capital infrastructure reserve allocations to the Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan be considered immediately following the staff report on this item, which is listed as item 8.1 on today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you, Elsie Davenport. I need a move and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Pauls. All in favor of the agenda? Thank you. And Councillor Farr and Whitehead, we've got you marked in the affirmative. And just make sure the vote screen comes up and we're good. Thank you. That's approved. Declarations. Are there any declarations this afternoon? Not seeing any. Uh, item three, the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting from September 11th, 2020. Need a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councilor Ferguson, seconded by Councilor Nan. Electronic vote. And for those that are voting by hand, switching back and forth from eScribe to WebEx, so I might not see your uh, vote immediately, but the clerks are keeping their, their eyes out. Thank you. On to delegation requests. So we have item 5.1. This is a request from um, Kevin Vandermeulen and Roman Carrick, respecting Hamilton Cycling Committee for a uh, future meeting. So I need a, a mover and a seconder, moved by Councillor Whitehead, seconded by Councillor Pauls. All in favor? Thank you. Item 6.1 is the Hamilton Cycling Committee minutes from February 5th, 2020 and March 4th, 2020. Uh, I think Councillor Pauls and Whitehead are reps. So would you like to move in second? Yep, moved by Councillor Paul, seconded by Councillor Whitehead. Is there any discussion? Not seeing any, all in favor? Thank you. Uh, on to public hearings and uh, written virtual delegations. 
Please note that the public has been advised of how to pre-register and be a virtual delegate at public meetings on today's agenda. The first item is 7.1, the proposed permanent closure and sale of a portion of road allowance abutting 1181 Governors Road in Dundas. As required under the city's bylaw 14-204, a public meeting is required. Notice of this public meeting was provided and posted on the City of Hamilton's website. The notice advised that anyone whose lands are judicially affected may appear before the committee. The clerk has advised that no individuals have pre-registered to be a virtual delegate. As we do not have any members of the public registered to speak to this item, I need a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting. Moved by Councillor Vanderbeek, seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor or opposed? Got everybody? Yep, thank you, that's carried. And then on the report, are there any questions or discussion from the committee respecting the report? Count, Councilor Ferguson. Yes, I just, uh, I wanna be uh, certain of this, but it shows that it's in Ward 13. I think it's in Ward 12. Highway 8 is a dividing line between 13 and 12, and maybe Arlene can help me out on this, with how she re recollects it, but I believe it comes up Sulphur Springs Road, up down Weirs Road, and then follows the old town line up to Highway 8, and then straight out to uh, Cambridge. So maybe I can ask Arlene, is, is that addressed in your ward? When I look at the maps or in my ward, it looks like it's in 12, but I'm not sure. For uh, the staff person too. Councillor Vanderbeek, can't hear you. You're not muted. On our end, anyway. No. Does any staff no. person know? We could confirm that um, for council. I don't. There's nobody here. Um, I don't believe. Councilor Vanderbeek, were you able to get your microphone? No. Not at the moment. Okay. Well, Go there, ahead. You were just there. On. We are. there we did go. that work? Yes. <laughs> I have no idea what I did. <laughs> no idea. I'm not positive either, and uh, I am just looking it up. <sighs> well, maybe this is a time, uh, Mr. Chair, we could just get that confirmed for the minutes for council. Uh, I think Elsie Davenport. Um, sharing her screen here that might offer some clarification. It says word 13. We, we can, can still confirm it. Davenport from clerks. I was just using the city's website and it does appear that it's in ward 13. I have shared okay. my screen for everyone to see. Yeah, but it cuts it off, doesn't it? Okay, you know, we can I, I, it, it looked to me like it was in 12, but I'm not sure because Highway 8 is a dividing line um, between West Flamborough and East Flamborough and uh, but it's not a big deal. I'll let it go. We'll, we'll get it confirmed by council. Okay. Um, Councilor Farr, did you wish to speak to this item? 7-3. 7-3. Okay. Um, any further discussion on 7-1? Not seeing any. So moved by Councilor Vanderbeek, seconded by Councilor Ferguson. On the report, all in favor? Councilor Nan, were you able to vote? Thank you, that carries. 7-2, the proposed permanent closure and sale of a public unassumed alley abutting 31 Crook Street and 35 Crook Street in Hamilton in Ward 1. As required under the city's bylaw number 14-204, a public meeting is required. Notice of this public meeting was provided and posted on the city of Hamilton's website. The notice advised that anyone whose lands are judicially affected may appear before the committee. The clerk has advised that no individuals have pre-registered to be a virtual delegate. As we do not have any members of the public registered to speak on this item, 
need a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Pauls. Thank you. All in favor or opposed? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Vanderbeek, were you able to vote? All right, we've got everybody. Thank you. That passes. And on the report, are there any questions or discussion from the committee on the report? Councillor Whitehead? Just to let you know, I'm now. Officially an e scribe. Thank you, Councillor. Okay. So then on the report, no discussion. So we need a mover and a seconder on the report. Moved by Councillor Ferguson, seconded by Councillor Whitehead. All in favor? everybody thank you that carries on to 7.3 is the proposed permanent closure and sale of a portion of public assumed alley abutting 75 Catherine Street South as required under the city's bylaw number 14-204 a public meeting is required notice of this public meeting was provided and posted on the city of Hamilton's website the notice advised that anyone whose lands are traditionally affected may appear before the committee the clerk has advised that no individuals have registered to be a virtual delegate. As we do not have any members of the public registered to speak at this item for this item, I need a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting. Moved by Councillor Farr, seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor to close the public meeting. And then I'll come to you, Councillor Report. A decent businesses mostly some residents um, had some issues with this but I just wanted to take the moment to thank staff for working out another um, perpetual deed or easement for all those uh, folks who had concerns it helps uh, them in knowing that um, they'll always have that access they've enjoyed to date um, secondly on this particular file I'll take an opportunity to thank my colleagues from um, yesteryear in the first term of council I uh, sought through not one, not two, but three different motions, the ability in Ward 2 to uh, transform our surface parking lots that we manage in the city into greater and higher spaces. Uh, we have, I think, transferred two very small uh, lots to date. This is a uh, Del represents the largest, uh, or at least one of the larger of the 17 or so uh, surface asphalt parking lots that council eventually agreed to surplus. So this is a big project and I just wanted to advise public works that there'll be a, a really a good update um, coming very soon to us with respect to this development, which is moving along nicely. So thanks again to my colleagues who supported that and all the staff, mostly from planning who helped get us to this point. This is an exciting project and it certainly is a transformation of greater uh, to a greater and higher use. Thank you. Thank you for the update, Councillor. Um, any further discussion? I'm not seeing any. So we closed, we finished the vote on closing the public meeting. Yeah. So then on the report itself, moved by Councillor Farr, seconded by everybody. Councillor Whitehead, all in favor? Just waiting for you, Councillor Farr. There we go. And that is carried, thank you. 7.4, the proposed permanent closure and sale of a portion of public unassumed alley abutting 401 
Victoria Avenue North in Ward 3. As required under the city's bylaw number 14-204, a public meeting is required. Notice of this public meeting was provided and posted on the City of Hamilton's website. The notice advised that anyone whose lands are judicially affected may appear before the committee. The clerk has advised that no individuals have pre-registered to be a virtual delegate. As we do not have any members of the public registered to speak on this item, I need a mover and a seconder to close the public meeting. Moved by Councillor Nan, seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor of closing the public meeting? Councillor Vanderbeek. There we go. Thank you. The public meeting is now closed. On the report, if there's any discussion on the report, seeing none, moved by Councillor Nan, seconded by Councillor Pauls. All in favor? Waiting for the vote to pop up on my end here. There we go. Thank you. Waiting for the vote to close. Okay, that carries, thank you. And before we move on to staff presentations, I'm just gonna turn the floor over to Gord McGuire, Director of Engineering Services, who'd like to uh, say a few words. Director McGuire. Uh, thanks very much, Chair um, Chair Danko. I just wanted to point out to the committee that the last four reports were authored by Gary Kirchnoff. Um, Gary has decided to retire after 35 years with the city. He started in uh, 1985 with uh, our HSR planning section. Uh, he moved on to the Traffic and Parking Services Group, where he was instrumental in the 2003 uh, World Cycling Championship, uh, the 0306 and uh, 12 Canadian Opens. And then he came to engineering services where he, he helped us develop our traffic count system, our utility guide, as well as all of our policies re regarding right-of-way permitting, special events, road occupancies, film processes, road alleys and closures, as well as our encroachments. So I just wanna state that it's been a real pleasure working with Gary for the last number of years. He's been a real, uh, a real influence on our division and a real mentor for a lot of staff. He's always passionate about getting the work done correctly, and, and he's really well connected with council, staff, and the public. So he, he took a lot of things into consideration, and, and his approach was balanced, smart, and very beneficial to the city. Um, I'm going to miss his presence in the office as a, as a co-worker and a team leader, and I think uh, it's going to be difficult to replace his level of experience. Uh, that said, he's got 35 years in an acreage um, that he wants to um, spend some more time on. He's bought some new equipment, so uh, he's excited about that. Just wanted to wish him uh, wish him the best and uh, a really truly rewarding next phase. Thank you, Director McGuire, and congratulations to Gary, um, Councillor Collins. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. I just I wanted to echo those comments by Gord. Uh, I had the pleasure of working with Gary and his wife Donna, who recently retired from City Housing Hamilton for well over 20 years now. And uh, Gary, as uh, as was met, has been mentioned, he's terrific <clears throat> in terms of corporate knowledge. Um, his, his interaction with our constituents in terms of serving the community and his communication skills, absolutely terrific. And he's been all over the organization from HSR to traffic to a number of other areas. And we're gonna miss uh, Gary's expertise and his presence. He has just a terrific uh, personality very calming demeanor, demeanor, very funny guy. And uh, I'm gonna miss uh, Gary. I wish him all the best in retirement. I know he and his w wife, Donna, and their daughter, Taylor, um, will certainly um, 
you know, they're, they're, they'll have a lot more time to spend together. So I'm, I, I just want to wish Gary all, all the best in his retirement and uh, thank him for his years of service, not just to uh, the organization, but to our Thank you, Councillor. Well said. Uh, any other discussion? Not seeing any. You just cut off there at the end, Councillor Collins. So I think you were you were finished, but just in case. I am. Yep. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. On to staff presentations. Then uh, is item eight point one, the Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan for Ward Seven and Eight. I'd like to call upon Cynthia Graham, the Manager of Landscape Architectural Services to present to committee. Thank you, Council. Uh, thank you through the chair. I'm just going to share my screen. Is that working? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, so just want to thank um, everybody for having us today. I'm here today to talk about the St. Lawrence Park Master Plan that uh, we completed within my group. So just a quick agenda. I'll talk about the purpose of the report. We'll talk about the report mandate and then get into the content, including information gathering, stakeholder engagement and community consultation. We'll talk about the concept plan as well as the implementation strategy and some high level costing. So the purpose of the master plan is to provide a blueprint for future park improvement projects. And we do these for large um, city parks uh, to help us guide the redevelopment or development uh, through time and help us uh, with the infrastructure planning. So um, in 2019, we retained the MBTW group to help us prepare this master plan to identify the concept, to provide a framework to guide construction for future park improvements and provide high level costing to help us plan. The team in, undertook some extensive consultation and community engagement as part of the master plan process. And I'll just list some types of engagement we took. Uh, adver uh, advisory group meetings, two online public surveys, two public meetings, pop-up display booths at various community events throughout the year. There was a walking tour of the park itself with community members, as well as ongoing website updates with project resources. The advisory groups in particular played a key role in informing the design decisions throughout the master plan process, and we really appreciate all of the participation. There was lots of city staff, and I won't go through them all, but we appreciate everyone's expertise and contribution to uh, the final master plan. The public advisory group uh, looked, uh, worked with outside organizations such as the Bruce Trail Conservancy, the Concession Street BIA, Centre Mount Neighbourhood Association, as well as local residents. And of course, we were working with the Niagara Escarpment Commission and other agencies throughout the process. And the Ward 7 and Ward 8 councillors, of course, provided input and were kept up to speed on all of the latest developments. So this is the preferred master plan. So this preferred design is one that responds to all of the feedback obtained from all the groups and from the water community. And so I'll go into specific pieces of each of the uh, sub projects in subsequent slides. So the first level of priority that we are looking at for improvement at Sam Lawrence Park deals with public safety. So we're focusing on lighting improvements, looking at intersection improvements at the Jolly Cut and Concession Street so that it's a safer pedestrian crossing experience while still maintaining the overall function of the intersection. We're looking at escarpment pathway redevelopment because there's some impacts there from the shifting escarpment, as well as providing a key linkage, which is a pedestrian bridge over the Jolly Cut. And this in particular will help with um, providing a route for pedestrians that doesn't have uh, road crossings included. And then the Arkelden and Bruce Trail linkage improvement that um, can provide some key public safety uh, improvements at the park. The second priority is accessibility projects. So this is broken into uh, west barrier-free linkages and east barrier-free linkages, and really focus on making sure that we have a barrier-free park. The third is the circulation projects. So making sure that there's a linkage for users through the park. And this in particular 
feeds into the larger Mountain Brow Trail. The um, council approved that initiative a few years back to look at a unencumbered um, multi-use path along the Brow from Ward 14 all the way over to Ward 9. The fourth priority is amenity projects. So that looks at reconfigured parking, some new urban plaza spaces, as well as a parks maintenance building and reconfigured parking along Concession Street. And then of course, because it's Sam Lawrence Park and because there are ornamental gardens and, and a horticultural excellence there, we are looking at some more barrier-free display gardens, as well as traffic median planting and some tree succession planting. And then the last category is called site-wide improvement projects. And these are ones that don't necessarily have a spot within the park, but would be um, implemented across the entire park. So that looks at interpretive signage replacement, stonewall repair, site furnishing replacements, and views and vistas. And these can be incorporated into any of the projects as they are implemented. So some high level costing for the project, we're looking at 20 years for implementation and our preliminary assessment is that it will cost around $16.2 million and that includes construction costs, construction contingency, design consulting fees, studies and permits and other fees, and it does not at this time include inflation. So by priority or type or rank, Public safety projects in the realm of $8.6 million. That includes the bridge over the Jolly Cut, which will be a large portion of that. Accessibility projects in the realm of 400,000. Circulation projects at 1.4 million. Amenity projects, 3.1 million. Garden and planting projects, 1.1 million. And site-wide improvement projects, 1.6 million. Some of these are new um, amenity features within the park. And so we will be talking with corporate finance to try and identify some of these projects for inclusion in the next development charge background study. So just as a recap, I just want to focus particularly on the fact that we have a design concept at this time. We don't have detailed design. So detailed design will be required for each of the subcomponent projects as they go forward. And we will be having ongoing conversations and coordination with both city staff and the ward councillors as we move forward, as is our usual process. So thank you. And at this time, I'll happy to take questions. Thank you, Cynthia. And I'm just going to kick off this discussion myself, if I can uh, have the indulgence of committee. I've got a long um, thank you list that I'm going to go through, and then I'm going to turn over the floor to uh, to discussion. So, as uh, as Cynthia mentioned, this was a, a rather complicated project. It was, you know, initiated by the previous council in 2018 and then uh, took the better part of the year of 2019 to get to the point that we're at now. So I'm gonna go, just go through um, a list of uh, who was involved and, and did what and, uh, and thank them for their, for their efforts. So to start off, we have the NBTW group, group who was the landscape architect and prime consultant, Janya Joyce and Mandy Kadger. We also have the BA consulting group, who worked on some of the traffic engineering, Steve Crossley, Mohammed Bari, uh, Blackwell were the structural engineers that helped with uh, some structural components, David Grivlik. MJS Consultants Inc. were our electrical engineers, Rob Natalin. Uh, we had some drone mapping and uh, services by Drone Services Canada Inc. And uh, that was Michael Brown. There was geotechnical engineering with wood, Thomas Ring and Dan Dimitru, and archeological support from ASI archeologist, that's David Robertson. We also uh, had uh, um, advisory and uh, comments work with the Niagara Escarpment Commission. So we'd like to thank Jim Avram for his support on this project. There was um, discussions with uh, various indigenous groups as well, because of course that's uh, an important part of this, uh, you know, this uh, refresh of, of Sam Lawrence. So we, we had uh, discussions with the Haudenosaunee Development Institute, Wayne Hill, the Huron-Wendant Nation, Maxime Picard, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Megan DeVry, 
and Six Nations Lands and Resources with Tanya Hill Montour. We'll thank all of them for their participation and, and valuable advice in this project. Um, and then of course, our, our City of Hamilton staff, uh, led by Landscape and Architectural Services with Cynthia Graham, Megan Stewart, Lawrence Stasic, Stasi I'm sorry, I'm, I'm butchering your name, Lawrence, <laughs> Stasiak, and John Vandriel. Um, so they were the, the lead of the master plan process and uh, liaison between the city and all internal staff, uh, the counselor's offices, all the consultants, and, uh, and the public. Um, from parks and cemeteries, we had Andrea McDonald and Rob Wagner who uh, assisted. Transportation planning and parking, uh, Steve Malloy, Omar Shams, Daryl Bender, Alistair McIvlin, and Andrew Brown. In our transport transportation operations and maintenance department, Chris King, Rob DeClair, and Tim Mendoza um, all assisted in the, in the project. In traffic signals, Jeff Cornwell and Don Bingham. Uh, on the traffic safety side, side it's we had uh, George Vidovic, Energy Fleet and Facilities, Janet Warner, Luann Duxbury, Chris Atchison, and Vince Buter. Forestry and Horticulture, Mercia Mohanan, and Neil Strollfield. Public Health, Linda Godin. Placemaking, Public Art and Projects, Ken Coyd and Meredith Plant uh, were, were uh, part of the, our discussions. Uh, development Planning, Heritage and Design, Carissa Madsen. And cultural Heritage Planning, Marinda Butt Brut sorry, Brunton. Natural Heritage Planning, Melissa Kitty. In Transit, Tanya Detmar. Design Engineering, Susan Jacob. In Asset Management, Rich Andoga. In Crime and Prevention with the Hamilton Police Service, Sergeant Ray Wong. So, um, oh, I got a whole other page as well. In our uh, public advisory groups, just really quickly, and thank you for the... Uh, for the discretion committee, we uh, we had assistance from the Concession Street BIA with Christina Gessler, the Center Mount Neighborhood Association, Holly Christophilopoulos. I'm, I'm, she changed her name officially to Holly Chris, so we're just gonna go with that. The Hamilton Mountain Heritage Society, David Lind, Lindman, the Bruce Trail Conservat Conser I'm sorry, the Bruce Trail Conservation, uh, the Iroquois Bruce Trail Club, Peter Rumble, and of course, uh, all of the Hamilton residents that uh, participated throughout the process um, in our public PIC venues, which were held at the Hamilton Public Library on Concession Street and the Hamilton Mountain Seventh-day Adventurist at, um, Church. And that would be Caitlin Farlick and Richard Roshman. So once again, just a really sincere appreciation from me as the Ward 8 Councillor to Cynthia and your team and everybody that was involved here. Um, like I said, it was a, a very complicated project, a uh, year's worth of uh, investment and work. And um, I'm really appreciative of everything that was done here. And Stephanie's given me the five minutes, so I get to turn the floor over to committee and uh, we'll open up for further discussion. So we have Councillor Pauls, I'll let you, uh, Yes. Pick off as well. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for thanking everybody. Uh, I just want to thank uh, Councillor Danko and I working together in this. As you all know, uh, Sam Lawrence Park was all Ward 7. And um, it was realigned this year, uh, two years ago. And now the west side is Councillor Danko's and the east side is mine. So working together has been a great pleasure because uh, the ideas that come when we, we work together. But the best thing I want to tell you, if you give me about 30 seconds, why San Lawrence is important to me. Uh, as you know, I came from Italy, we went to Toronto, and then we moved to Windsor. When I met my husband at a college, he I've never been to Hamilton, and guess where he took me? To San Lawrence ba uh, Park. And I looked over the city, and I want to tell you something. This is the truth. I fell in love with the city, and also with my husband. But the city was what I loved about it. You know why? Windsor is flat. 
I had never been to uh, Hamilton, and here he takes me overlooking our beautiful city. And, uh, and we were married shortly after that, I'll tell you. But I fell in love with Hamilton. And uh, as you all know, I've been married a long time, and I even bought a house on Upper Wellington because I love going by San Lawrence Park. So I just wanted to give you a little highlight. But I want to tell you that when we first got elected, Councillor Danko, myself, and actually Councillor Terry Whitehead, we had a community uh, walk at Lime Ridge Mall. And I remember Cynthia and everybody there with their booth. And I remember all the people going around giving their ideas with their stickers. They were so excited about doing something with the Sam Lawrence Park. I know sometimes it, the first thing it is it needs safety because it is a little bit dangerous because it divides. But when somebody came up with a bridge, I was so excited, a bridge going from the east to the west and the trail, the connectivity from wards nine, eight, six and seven and eight, Mount Brow to 14. What a great legacy we're going to have here. And uh, I was more than thrilled to say, yes, I want to support this. Because I'll tell you, our community needs a place to walk. Our community needs a place to bike, to enjoy their life after a hard day's work. And I think Sam Lawrence Park on the mountain is one of the best parks. And if we could connect it with safety, with the beautifying, whatever the people of Ward 7 and Ward 8 would like, we want to make sure they're happy. And I know all those committee, I remember going to a concession um, a festival, and there they were with their banners and their uh, project, and everybody going around, they putting their little stickers. They were everywhere. So I want to say thank you to Cynthia and every single person that's making this reality come true because concession really needs it. Not only the business, but I don't know if you know, if you've never been up there, go and look how beautiful it is. And all the apartments on Concession Street, what a great thing for them to overlook, to come down and and, and use it. So I want to say thank you to Councillor Danko, because now there's two of us fighting for this beautiful park and making sure it's for everyone to enjoy. So I want to thank you, Councillor Danko, and all the staff. Thank you again. Thank you, Councillor Pauls. Uh, so on my speakers list, I have Councillors Collins, Jackson, Whitehead, and Marula. Councillor Collins. Oh, Councillor Collins, you just bumped out of the meeting, so we'll come back to you. Uh, Councillor Jackson. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, little did I know Public Works Committee would be discussing parks and romance at the same time. Marvelous. <laughs> Anyways, Councillor Pauls, that's a beautiful story. Sincerely, it really is. And I just want to start off by saying, uh, I, I suppose I should say my remarks for your both your motions later on. But let me just say, often with a project like this, and Sam Lawrence Park, as we all know, Chairman Danko, is a jewel within the inventory of the community parks that we have, but it's, a, it's an extra special gem in light of its location. And um, often in projects like this, uh, as much as staff and management do their very best in putting all the research, design, conceptual aspects of it together and consultations, it takes the weight of a political office to ensure that we're nudging, as I've often used as an analogy, nudging that big boulder up the uh, hill until eventually that boulder can get over the hill and run down on its own. And so I commend both you and Councillor Pauls. And if I might say, for picking up the torch this term as new members of council, from what, if my memory serves me correctly, was from when Councillor Skelly had put some money, I believe from her area rated Ward 7 reserve, uh, towards the initial design to at least kickstart or possibly add some further fuel and momentum to the Sam Lawrence Master Park project. So right off the bat, uh, commendations all around, uh, Chairman Danko to you and Councillor Pauls. Could I just quickly, with a couple of minutes left in my five minutes, a uh, couple of questions for you to Manager Cynthia Graham, please. Certainly. Uh, thank you. Uh, Manager Graham, 
you know I've said this many, many times, you and your leadership in landscape architect design division and your entire team, you know I've worked with you closely on the smallest of neighborhood parks, along with much bigger projects of Vista viewing along Ward 6, the Mountain Brow uh, Recreational Trail, and now what we're doing on Albion Falls. We're very, very lucky to have you in the position you are shepherding this massive project. Couple of quick questions to you because your presentation, I've actually have like about a hundred pages here of traditional um, paperwork on the plans and that, but maybe more for public consumption consumption because you, um, you were quick to go over the presentation. Maybe give me quickly a little feedback of where the community input was most desired. I see some headings of lighting improvement, intersection at Upper Wellington Concession, the new bridge and maybe how you came upon uh, the location of the bridge. I see some new trails. I see some maybe enhancements or possibly some upgrades to existing pathways. Maybe just quickly elaborate, Cynthia, if you could, for public consumption on some of those headings and how you came upon this, um, this final conceptual design. Through you, Chairman Danko, please. Yeah, thank you through the chair. Um, so we did hear quite a lot of um, feedback and input from uh, all of the people that we talked with. The overarching thing that we heard and for anyone who's interested, um, you can find this on page 11 of the um, the master plan report uh, talks about connectivity. And uh, so looking at um, making sure that people are able to get through the park in a way that is safe. Uh, they felt that particularly as pedestrians crossing at that intersection, um, coming up the jolly cut, there was a right turn lane and there was the, the light and then there was the jug handle on the other side. And it was just a lot to navigate. And so what we heard from them was if there was a way for us to get them through the park and and be able to traverse the park in a way that was a little less daunting, that was desirable and, um, and a priority. And so that was why we really considered the inclusion of the bridge because that provide an, a way to get through the park without getting through that intersection section at all. So um, we heard lots of great things about how beautiful it was. Everybody enjoyed the view. They wanted us to preserve all of those aspects. So um, yeah, the, the major, I guess, uh, piece of, of improvement was, was about the uh, connectivity. Thank you, Cynthia. And, and Mr. Chairman, would you say, Cynthia, like when I see lighting improvements, would you agree then, I guess, that um, lighting was either limited or not sufficient or possibly poor, that that was one of the things to add even a real or perceived uh, greater safety for uh, the users of the park through you, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, through the chair, there is um, existing lighting there. Of course, the technology has advanced so much since that was in, installed and um, lighting standards have changed. So uh, as we go through the project implementing, obviously we'll be focusing on LED. It provides a different quality of light than the light that would be ha have been used when it was installed and um, ensuring that we are providing adequate light for, for the pedestrians and the users very good, Cynthia. Mr. Chairman, I'll just wrap up. I appreciate your indulgence, but I can't praise um, you and Councillor Pauls and staff enough. Uh, this co continuum from Ward 9, the East Mountain Trails, along Ward 6, 7, 8, all the way to 14, um, we wanted to build a continuum of social recreational opportunities, and this is all part of image transformation that's been going on in our city, I'll say since amalgamation, whether the waterfront or escarpment trails, this is keeping the momentum going. Congratulations. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Collins, is he back in the meeting? Not seeing him. Uh, Councillor Whitehead, we'll come to you next. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I. Um... I want to congratulate, obviously, I remember Councillor uh, Skelly coming to me and talking about some of the conversations you had with staff and some of the um, ways we can opportun uh, optimize Sa San Lawrence Park. That was the beginning. Um, but to see a project through, it always has to have a beginning, but it has to have an end. And in the middle is the implementation. And uh, so I want to congratulate Councillor uh, Danko and uh, uh, Councillor, uh, what's your name again? <laughs> Councillor Pauls. Yeah, yeah. You hear from almost every corner of the city. 
<laughs> Cosmopolitan. <laughs> Uh, and her love for the city. Uh, and I was just kidding there, Councillor Pauls. I wasn't having a moment. I know all about you. Everyone knows about you. Because uh, uh, you're, you're probably one of the most exciting people to be around when it comes to uh, celebrating uh, milestones and, and, and beauty and ambiance and so forth. And there's no better person to lead that charge than you. Uh, this is exciting, but you know this isn't all possible without uh, some of the best staff in North America. And it's right here in the city of Hamilton. I know I had the pleasure of working with uh, the staff and uh, we'll be working with Paul Danko. So again, another relationship, and this is sort of a, uh, a completion of a beginning. And that is the uh, Winter Park at uh, Mil uh, McCulloch. And I wanna thank uh, them for all the work that we're just trying to pull the money together and hopefully have that implemented in the next couple of years, uh, which again, provide opportunity for many of our residents across the city, a destination. Far too many kids are sitting in the houses in the rec rooms playing, uh, uh, with your tablets, and uh, we need to get them out in the wintertime. And uh, it doesn't always have to be recreational sport. It could be something simple as tobogganing or or, or, uh, or or just biking or skiing or skating. These kinds of things are great for the soul, great for, for the uh, the body and great for the mind. So I want to thank everybody involved. I look forward to uh, uh, continued support because we know this is an incremental uh, approach. And now the money has to be followed. You have to do the design stuff and decide what are the priorities first. I will go with the bridge first. Well, the reason I said that, because I heard uh, Councillor Paul talk about how she loved the connectivity and so forth, and she celebrated that with such, such, such zest. I was thinking about, wouldn't it be nice if it was just about east-west, but we could have the same zest for the connections between the mountain and the lower city? That's something we've got to work on, and we will. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Marula. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, you as well as Councillor Pauls and uh, former Councillor Skelly on this particular project. It's something that's uh, incredibly exciting and something uh, that's actually important to me for a number of reasons of uh, being born and raised here. I know that was my dad's favorite park, particularly when somebody visited from Italy. That was the go-to place. So I've, that was, so I've had a number of uh, a, a great time spent in that park. Having said that, uh, over the years, there's been a lot of debate and contention surrounding a potential commercial entity, such as a restaurant, because of the view at the location. During the master plan process, did that come up and was it discussed in any way, shape or form? Cynthia? Yeah, hi, through the chair. Um, thank you. Uh, it, it was discussed. Um, the, the conversation that we had with um, uh, in both internal staff as well as with the Niagara Escarpment Commission um, really led us to uh, keep the park as um, the park that it is now. Um, certainly there would be bookings available for, you know, weddings or photography or anything like that, like, like all of the other parks that we have. But the... Um, Inclusion of a uh, commercial revenue generating um, business at the park, it wasn't uh, determined that that was uh, a good way forward at this time. Okay, excellent. Just uh, curious, because I know I would say over the last 50 years, that issue probably has come up 50 times and a lot of headlines, but nothing ever did come to fruition. But I'm glad that through this master plan, we set that aside uh, moving forward. And, and again, I just want to thank staff for their efforts as well, and congratulations to all involved. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any further discussion? I'm not seeing Councillor Collins on the in the meeting there. Um, just a couple of questions from me then uh, to dig a bit deeper into specifically what's in the master plan. So we've talked about the safety aspects of this. Um, Cynthia, could you address some of the safety aspects with the lower pathway and how that'll, what we're planning with that? Thank you, through the chair. I'm actually gonna ask um, John Vandriel to turn on his mic. Um, he was the lead on the master plan project and so can really get into the specifics about um sorry, you, you're just cutting out there a little bit cynthia nope sorry uh john vandriel is going to turn on his mic and he he's the one who led the master plan through the specifics so i'm going to ask him to uh get into those details for you okay john hi thank you cynthia through the chair can you can you hear me okay that's better yep okay perfect uh, thank you, Councillor Danko, through the through the chair. Um, yeah, so we wanted to address um, 
the safety of the lower of the lower path with the lower escarpment pathways. Um, this was something that really came up in um, public consultation, especially, and gathering uh, feedback from the community, particularly with regard to some of the lower pathways that descend within the um, escarpment setting itself. Um, it was determined through the extensive consultation and through staff discussion that we um, will, um, in this plan, be decommissioning the lower pathway. Um, it is quite de degraded at the moment. In fact, um, there are barriers that um, uh, detract people from, from going into that pathway at the moment. Um, so we wanted to focus the efforts then on what pathways people use right now and how we can actually enhance the safety in those particular pathways. Um, ones that see less use and that are perceived, um, uh, have a perceived danger, uh, we wanted to discourage use and therefore not include those as part of the larger design. Um, if I also may add, we also did conduct a crime prevention through environmental design audit with Hamilton Police on this to determine some of the safety aspects as well. Um, what was perceived safety, what was actually uh, unsafe through, um, through, uh, through the police um, data that they had. Um, and so we were able to work with stakeholders appropriately on that. Thank you, Jonathan. On the... Um... We talked about the, the bridge over the Jolly Cut and the need to connect the east and west portions of the park. But Cynthia, I was wondering if you could maybe expand on what the specific vision is for that bridge to look like. Yeah, through the chair, thank you. Um, at this time, we don't have a design specific in mind. We know that we want it to be pedestrian scale, that we want it to have barrier-free access, and we need to have the clearance underneath um, for the vehicular traffic. As well, we do know that this particular park is within the Niagara Escarpment Plan, so there will be some restrictions about um, visual impact studies and things like that. But our hope is that this will become a design piece, um, that it will be uh, beautiful and aesthetic and really uh, an entry gateway um, for the city and that uh, it has really exciting um, potential and opportunities uh, through the design process that we can pursue. Thank you. Um, Council Marula touched on the, uh, the, the discussions over the years about commercialization of the, the park area. Um, could you expand on the, the urban plaza space and what we're anticipating that space being used for? Yeah, through, through, uh, through the chair, um, in particular, we wanted um, places for gathering. So it could be informal um, gathering as we see now. We, it could be picnics um, as well. There could be festivals or other events planned in that space. We have allowed for the provision for food trucks to come in. And so we can have those types of events there. Uh, it would be on a per event basis. And the rest of the time, it would just be a beautiful plaza area um, as we would provide in any of our other parks. We do find that, particularly in large uh, citywide parks, having free available space for whatever use people want to have is really valuable. And uh, that urban plaza space is, is intended to for, um, suit that function. Thank you, Cynthia. Um, on the ornamental plantings, um, just wondering if we can maybe just dig into that. That's kind of one of the things that the uh, the park is known best for is those ornamental plantings. So what specifically are we anticipating to change or to keep or to improve in terms of the, the plantings? Yeah, through the chair, um, for sure there will be upgrades to the irrigation system. It is um, nearing the end of its life. So as we go through those, we will be upgrading that to more efficient systems and, and newer technology. I don't think that we envision a wholesale change to the ornamental gardens that are there now, but we do want to expand to a barrier-free ornamental garden um, up closer to Concession Street. We wanted to make people feel and understand that as they're walking along the street that this is what this park 
can offer because uh, it does take a little bit of, um, you know, wandering to get to the ornamental garden area as it stands now. It's not necessarily evident from Concession Street. So tying that together and creating new opportunities, um, I think that 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 was the goal was to provide the barrier free access, new garden um, opportunities near Concession Street. Thank you. Uh, one of the other discussions that we had during the, the process was the idea of uh, public art and tying this into our, our local indigenous communities. Um, would you like to expand on that a little bit? Yeah, uh, through the chair, we have had conversations with Ken Coyd in the public um, art uh, group, and they are um, happy to support public art in this location. They think it's a great spot. We have had conversations with some of our Indigenous communities, and they also are excited to participate in a public art process that has an Indigenous um, uh, component to it or Indigenous theme. So uh, as part of the project, we will be looking to implement that. We have some provisions within the master plan of locations where that could go, and we can refine those as, as that um, rolls forward. Thank you. And Stephanie's given me the five minutes. Um, mm -hmm. I've got two other uh, areas I'd like to touch on, and then uh, I will wrap up. So I appreciate community or committee's uh, 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 leeway here. The, one of the other discussions that we had, and I think a really important part of the public consultation was uh, one of the themes was that um, residents didn't want to see a large change to the use of the park in terms of adding sports fields or adding playgrounds and that kind of thing. But we have had discussions about play opportunities and how to incorporate that in when you have you know families that are using the park to be able to provide you know, not just adults, but also some play opportunities in, in the context of the park as it is now. So, Cynthia? Yeah, th uh, thanks. When it comes to the specifics like that, I'm, I'm going to ask John to see if um, he can provide some clarity on that. Thanks, Cynthia. Through the chair, yes. Um, that was something we, we did hear a lot about um, from residents was the, the kind of classic park elements that exist in this park right now, it's, it's what we would consider a more passive uses, um, just kind of sitting, enjoying the space, um, sitting on the open lawns. Um, we wanted to really capitalize on that um, through, what we've heard, through what we heard from the community and with, with uh, staff as well. So the, the master plan new design concept um, tries to really focus on that and enhances, tries to really enhance these spaces then. Um, focusing on things like um, an amphitheater, um, plaza space, as Cynthia was mentioning earlier, um, more horticultural display gardens with seating and benches and kind of capitalizing on certain views and vistas then as well. Um, we, we opted to not really pursue um, uh, sports fields and those kinds of things because we do have parks in, in close proximity to, to Sam Lawrence that serve um, sports fields um, or serve that purpose um, we feel much better. Um, and so we really, like we said, wanted to capitalize kind of on the passive uses for this park um, so that people could enjoy the space to its optimal potential. And on the, the found play opportunities that uh, we had talked about? Certainly, yes. So one of the things we had um, discussed as part of the master plan process was um, opportunities to kind of infuse play into certain areas of the park. Um, that being said, um, things such as um, different types of seating, rocking chairs, um, those kinds of play moments, different types of rocks, for example, um, not necessarily traditional play structure elements um, that you'd see in, in a kind of a traditional play um, uh, playground area, but really kind of capitalizing on, on different smaller areas throughout the park um, and using the, the multi-use pathway that kind of connects these spaces um, is an opportunity to do so off of that pathway. Thank you, John. Uh, last thing I wanted to touch on, because I know I'm well over my five minutes, but just the last thing that was really important to residents uh, was to honor the history of this park. And it has a long architectural history and from its original design 
and they didn't want to see any big change to the park that would alter its feeling in terms of its um, landscape architectural history. So I don't know, Jonathan or Cynthia, just would you like to touch on the history of the park, where you know the original design came from and how we've tried to honor that through the master plan? Sure. Um, so thank you through the chair. Yes, um, we've we've certainly um, gathered a lot of information and heard from community members firsthand on some of the historical elements of the park, um, as well as 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 well as its um, um, prominence in the Hamilton Park system and its historical prominence that way as well. Um, we, Currently, the park has actually a quite significant inventory of interpretive signage that really helps um, tell the story of the park. Uh, however, a lot of that signage is in disrepair right now. Um, one of the key focus elements to um, kind of the widespread changes that we'd like to see in this park is updating that signage um, to really cap um, to really uh, clarify and to enhance the historical component. So in her interpretive signage being um, a critical component of kind of using that historical, um, um, telling the, hist the history of the site, um, but also um, some of the built form in the site right now too. Um, the pavilion that, that's currently there sits on, on an historical um, Hamilton water tower. Um, we also have the, the historical stone walls that are in a bit of a disrepair right now too. So trying to refurbish those as part of the um, um, park improvement projects, we see that as a way of, of really um, trying to reflect on the history of how that park was formed. Um, and then as, in, as Cynthia mentioned, um, uh, working with Indigenous groups as well to bring in that component of the history, history of the park. We see that as a really important um, component to um, telling the story of, the, of uh, a more wholesome discussion of the, of, uh, the history of the park. Thank you, John. Uh, so th that's uh, all the questions I had on the, the presentation. I still have Councillor Pauls and Councillor Whitehead on the speakers list. So Councillor Pauls. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to ask Jonathan, I remember our first meeting at the uh, library on concession. People were concerned uh, basically about how famous this park's going to get and we're going to have tour buses and we're going to have tons of people there. And they really felt like it's a Ward 7 and Ward 8 park and they love the idea of just walking and making sure it stays. They just, Basically, they just wanted um, lipstick put on, they kind of said. But I, I'm wondering about the parking. Is the parking is going to be bigger or just about the same first? And second, can you give me the stats how many people walk there, take the bus, or um, take, uh, uh, go by car? So just uh, to get an idea who uses the park. Certainly, thank you. Uh, through the chair, um, I'll address your your first uh, first inquiry, Councillor. Um, the, the your your point about um, having a, an influx of of of, of people using the space. Um, we do see this as this this um, multi-use pathway as a way to really bring people to the space. So we do want to see people in this in this park. Um, however, addressing um, cars and parking and and perceived congestion and things like that. Um, at the moment, we don't we don't as part of this master plan anticipate removing any parking. It would simply be relocating some of the parking spaces where they are. They currently exist um, off to the in the western parking lot, um, closer to um, some of the quieter neighborhoods off of to west of Upper Wellington. Um, the master plan does propose to relocate some of that park those parking spaces um, closer to the street. However, it does not um, propose to remove any of the parking spaces. So we do see a net zero um, loss of parking. It's just simply a reallocation of the parking. Um, similarly, on the eastern side, so where um, uh, the parking lot that abuts Concession Street or closer to the Concession Street business area, same similar um, where we don't see uh, removal of the amount of parking spaces, but rather a relocation of where the, that parking will um, go in future. Um, this is to capitalize on some of the uh, spaces and 
vistas that exist right now and turning some of the area that's currently used as parking into more pedestrian space, but then relocating some of that parking now to still accommodate uh, motorists and, uh, and pedestrians alike. And in your opinion, uh, Jonathan, do you think most people are just around there walking or are they uh, driving to the park? Do you know uh, stats or? Through the chair, thank you for, uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, we, in our first survey, um, when we, we took a survey of residents and we got over 500 responses, 56% um, of people said they, they took the car to get there. 27% um, said they walked. Um, we had a fewer amount that said that, that they used public transportation. Um, so we do see people using uh, vehicular access to get to the park currently. We also see them using um, the, the space in the evening hours predominantly, often to watch the sunset um, after work in an evening, that kind of thing. Um, so we, that's another reason why we, did, we opted to, to keep the parking that's, that's keep the same amount of parking that's there now, but it would simply be a relocation of where, of where it currently exists. Thank you. I just want to say that uh, uh, this morning I got up early and read the whole, I mean, it's 661 pages. And I encourage residents to read it and to look at the history. I did not know that Sam Lawrence Park was named after the mayor. 194, it was Sam Lawrence, he was the mayor of Hamilton in 1944 to 1949. I did not know that. And I'm looking at the history, it's amazing. So if you're a history buff, you gotta read it all. It's amazing, I loved it. So I wanna say thank you. And this morning I had two cups of coffee reading all through it and I loved it. So thank you very much, Jonathan and Cynthia. You guys are fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Coffee's still working. <laughs> uh, Councillor Whitehead. I'm still laughing about that last comment I just heard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Almost fell off my chair. Um, yeah, I, I just had two quick questions. Uh, and I understand it's a passive area, but often in passive areas, uh, when families go and have a little picnic, they find little passive type sports to play. And one of the um, most busy activities I've seen in passive parks is one of our beloved uh, little sports called uh, bocce. So I'm wondering, uh, is there uh, uh, flatter layouts with, within this design that allow that type of activity? Uh, through the chair, um, thank you uh, for the question. There are some open lawn areas, so if um, you know if you can picture in your head like camping bocce, where you bring your balls and you throw them along the lawn, and and that sort of more informal type of bocce that absolutely will be accommodated within the park. We aren't anticipating the installation of a formal bocce court at this location. No, no, I, I was thinking more the, the law and pass of uh, uh, Bocce or, you know, if you have some English descent, you might want to play a little croquet. Anyway, uh, thank you for that. And uh, I also see Sam Lawrence Park as um, it really is the central park of Hamilton in the context that is fairly central and uh, nothing more majestic than looking over the city and looking from Sam Lawrence Park. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any further discussion on the presentation? Not seeing any from committee, and uh, it's really great hearing all those stories about uh, meeting up at Sam Lawrence Park. And you know, it's the same kind of feedback I've heard from residents: is if you are new to the city, or you're trying to recruit somebody to come to Hamilton to work or to move here, um, nine times out of ten, Sam Lawrence Park is the destination to take somebody to to showcase the city Hamilton. So um, it, it's it's really great to to hear those stories and um, reflect on the long history and traditions that uh, that surround this particular park so thank you all for the uh, the discussion um, so on the the presentation to receive the presentation I'm going to move by Councillor Paul seconded by myself all in favor
Thank you. That passes unanimously. And on the report, moved by Councillor Pauls, seconded by myself. Is there any discussion on the report itself? Seeing none, all in favor. Thank you, and that passes unanimously. Sincere appreciation committee. On to the approved change to the agenda. We'll now consider items 10.1 and 10.2. So I'm gonna relinquish the chair to Councillor Marula. Uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. So this is moved by myself, and I'm gonna ask Councillor Whitehead if he would second. Um, the Ward 8 Capital Infrastructure Reserve <clears throat> Allocation to Sam Lawrence Master Plan. Whereas the staff presented the final Sam Lawrence Master Plan Park to the public this afternoon, whereas Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan identifies $16.2 million of projects with an estimated implementation of 20 plus years. Whereas the Sam Lawrence Park is one of Hamilton's parkland gems, which attracts visitors, visit, visitors for the spectacular views of Hamilton, Lake Ontario, the Niagara Escarpment, and whereas Initiative 5.2, as identified in Appendix C to report PW18056A, respecting the Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan, proposes important pedestrian accessibility improvements. Therefore, be it resolved that $120,000 be allocated from Ward 8 Capital Infrastructure Reserve in 2021 and an additional $809,000 be allocated from the Ward 8 Capital Infrastructure Reserve in 2022 to the capital project ID 4401656603 Sam Lawrence Park to fund design and construction initiative 5.2 as identified in Appendix C of Report PW18056A respecting the Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan that the annual operating costs of $45,000 be added to the par parks operation budget base in 2022. <clears throat> the mayor and city clerk be authorized and directed to execute any required agreements. Um, so if, if I could, um, you know, we, we've talked quite a bit about the importance of Sam Lawrence Park, not only towards seven and eight, but also right across the mountain towards 14 and six and to the entire city. This, uh, it is a city -wide it is seen as um, kind of one of the representative um, features of our, our aesthetic and cultural landscape in Hamilton. And uh, Councillor Pauls and I, you know, we didn't want to just have the master plan land and be received without moving forward as quickly as we could with some actual shovels in the ground. So we wanted to put, uh, you know, as much money as we could afford through our area rating um, allocations towards the project so that uh, so that we could get moving on the master plan as quickly as possible. And I just maybe like to go to to Cynthia Graham to um, outline specifically what will be included in the scope of work um, that is going to be funded through this motion um, for us. Cynthia. Thank you, uh, Cynthia Graham, Landscape Architectural Services. Uh, so. This um, portion of funding from the Ward 8 um, Area Rating Reserve would be used um, to help contribute to those Western accessibility um, projects, and that includes lighting improvements on the Western parking lot, lower path and multi-use path, looking at the West multi-use path with connections to Concession Street, a Western entrance node with an enhanced paving system, interim condition of West parking lot to accommodate the multi-use path, so it's a bit of a rejigging of the um, parking lot to have the path go through there. Barrier free um, pathways from the lower path to the amphitheater and new gardens to enhance the separation between the multi-use path and the switchback, as well as some tree planting and furnishings, um, seating, trash receptacles, bollards. Thank you. And Danko? Just, just to re 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 reiterate, this is um, an initial a kickoff phase to the, the capital plans that are, are presented in the master plan. 
And this work is we're intending to build on in future years, whether that's through the city's capital budget or through um, grants and, and uh, funding from upper level. Of um, Cynthia, would you maybe just um, elaborate a little bit on where we see some of the funding in future years? Cynthia. Yes, through the chair. So um, Sam Lawrence Park was one of the parks that we did an application through the ICIP uh, culture and recreation stream. So I do see that this type of project would be a good fit for that similar type of stream um, if there are opportunities in the future. As I mentioned, we are going to look and see if we can include some portions of the upgrades or new features as part of the uh, development charge background study the next time that that's updated. And if there are grant or other opportunities for um, items such as the bridge that could have possibly a design competition, if there was um, a funder specific to that type of um, city building project, that uh, I see lots of potential for um, mobilizing funds for those types of components of this project. Councilor Dinkel. Thank you. And, and that's um, all I have to say to introduce this. And I, I sincerely appreciate the support from committee. Thank you, sir. And the uh, chair is yours. I think you got to call a vote. Oh, sorry. <laughs> all, in, <laughs> all in favor. <laughs> and it's Councilor, a Councilor Jackson wishes to speak. Oh, we do have a speaker's list in Councilor Jackson. Councilor Jackson, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Acting Chair Marula. Uh, through you to Cynthia. So, Cynthia, if this motion of Councillor Danko's and the following one from Councillor Paul's are approved, is my simple arithmetic accurate that I would subtract 2 million from your global 16.2 million Sam Lawrence Master Park Plan budget? That would leave you about 14 million over the next number of years to have to acquire. Through you, uh, Chairman Marula, please. Cynthia? Through you, Mr. Chair, that is correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so on the motion, moved by Danko, seconded by Pauls, all in favor, and it's an electronic vote. S seconded by Whitehead. Oh, sorry, seconded by Whitehead. There we go. And I presume that passes unanimously and the floor is now yours, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. That did pass unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Back to my roadmap here. On 10-2, the Ward 7 Capital Infrastructure Reserve Allocation. Councillor Pauls, would you like to introduce your motion? Yes, thank you. It's moved by myself and second by my wonderful Councillor Jackson, who sits beside me all the time, and I love it. Thank you. Uh, seconded by uh, Councillor Jackson, whereas staff presents the final Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan to the Public Works Committee on September 21st, 2020, for approval. Whereas the Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan identifies 16.2 million of projects with an estimate implementation timeframe of 20 years. Whereas Sam Lawrence Park is one of the Hamilton's Park Link gems, which attracts visitors from the spectacular view of Hamilton, Lake Ontario, and Niagara Escarpment. And Initiative 42, as identified in Appendix C, to report PW18056A respecting the Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan propose important pedestrian accessibility and safety improvement. Therefore, be resolved that 131,000 be allocated from Ward 7 Capital Infrastructure Reserve 108057 in 2021. And 892,000 be allocated from Ward 7 Capital Infrastructure Reserve 108057 in 2022 to the Capital Project ID 44016566603 Sam Lawrence Park to fund design and construction 
of Initiative 42 as identified in Appendix C to Report PW18056 A respecting the Sam Lawrence Park Master Plan. B the annual operating cost of 5,000 be added to the parks operation base budget in 2022 and that the mayor and the city clerk be authorized and directed to execute any required agreements and ancillary documents with such terms and condition in form satisfactory to the city solicitor. And I'm uh, so happy to put this through. And uh, if this gets this going, and if we could do it before 20 years, it'd be wonderful. So I am happy to put this motion through. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any discussion from committee? Not seeing any. It's moved by Councillor Paul, seconded by Councillor Jackson. All in favor on 10.2. Councilor Nan and Councilor Pearson. Councilor Nan, I got a thumbs up. Councilor Pearson, <laughs> I got a thumbs up. Thank you. And that passes you. Thank you to everybody on committee. And uh, I think it's just great to see the cooperation from uh, all the mountain councilors on this, right from wards 14, 8, 7, and 6. Uh, it's really very much appreciated. Thank you. On to discussion items. We have 9.1, which is the 2020 MUM show admission fee reduction. Uh, I need a mover and a seconder to put the uh, report on the floor. Moved by Councillor Nan, seconded by Councillor Ferguson. Any discussion? Councillor Jackson. <clears throat> Yeah, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is about the um, fabulous chrysanthemum show in Hamilton. And I'm going to try something on committee. And because of the report, I just looked at it over the weekend. Uh, forgive me, Mr. Chairman, that, as you know, I usually like to give an alert if I'm going to introduce something. If committee would look on page four of, of four of the report, you'll see under alternatives for consideration. And it talks about uh, alternative number two, to reduce the 2020 mum show fees to zero to allow for free entry this year. And I'm, I'm going to try it and I hope I can get a seconder at least so that I can uh, hopefully have a chance at this. Let me explain, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's the hundredth anniversary this year of all years, this ugly, horrible pandemic that has engulfed our world um, has been upon us since February, March we would have had a spectacular 100th year anniversary of this mum show, which attracts anywhere from minimum 15,000 visitors over its two week period in late October to as many in its peak years of about 40,000 visitors over the two weeks, primarily citizens of our city who find October to be um, a haven of rest at the time of the fall season, uh, an oasis, and to see the talents of our horticultural dis, uh, division on display at Gage Park, um, at the greenhouses. So I feel saddened by the fact that because of the pandemic, this show itself, I'm reading in the report, will be reduced in scope. That's number one. Uh, I have always supported the admission fees in past years because of the, um, because of the enormity and the comprehensive nature of the floral displays, something like 75,000 blooms uh, across the themed um, uh, area of, of the Gage Park greenhouses that uh, our citizens just adore and love. And I'm feeling so saddened and sorry this year, only because of the pandemic, and staff are trying to do their, I guess, fiscally responsible best to try to meet a halfway point 
by offering up a reduction from normal 725 admission for an adult to five dollars from a 625 for seniors to four bucks and $21 as a family pass for the two weeks to $14. So I want to thank staff manager Sam Scarlett of our forestry department for even offering up sensitively a discount. But given what so many of our thousands of our families, the hardship they've been through, the scare and worry about health concerns, the economy, some of their jobs that have uh, been put on hold, hoping they got the CERB to at least get them through each month to support their families. I would like to move this year as a one time only that we remove the fee entirely for the two week period and staff show if we did that, it would be approximately a $33,000 uh, variance that we would not recoup uh, from, the, uh, from the attendance of this year's mom show. And again, it's the hundredth year and surely to goodness, Mr. Chairman, if we did that, I think the public relations of that would spread well in our community. And surely to goodness, the 60 million we're hoping to get from the province for COVID related costs, of which we've already received 44 million, hopefully could easily cover the 33,000 lost in attendance fees. So that's my speech. That's where I'm at. If I can get a seconder, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And I, I saw an enthusiastic second. Um, so further discussion on, so the, the motion is to put on alternative two on the floor, which is the, to waive the admission fees, uh, moved by Councillor Jackson, seconded by Councillor Nan. So to speak to that, I have Councillors Nan, Ferguson and Pearson. Councillor Nan. Thank you through the chair and for the general public. I was a uh, thumbs up being and applauding and seconding in the background as Councillor Jackson was speaking. Um, I also read the report early this morning and thought consideration number two in the context of COVID. Uh, my Councillor colleague, uh, Councillor Jackson already covered all the points that I wanted to make in terms of, you know, fundamentally at the end of the day as being the ward councillor who has the privilege of having Gage Park and particularly the greenhouses uh, in her ward. Uh, I know how much access to those greenhouses has meant to residents throughout the city who come to Gage Park to en enjoy our tro tropical greenhouse and um, our, our beloved mom show. Um, I know for me personally, it has a lot of memory, even though, I, you know, in the scheme of things, I'm a new Hamiltonian uh, living here for under a decade, but it is a place where I go to, to remember my beloved mother-in-law because it used to be our annual journey to go enjoy the mom show together. So from that perspective, I know that there is such a history and legacy of this mom show for so many Hamiltonians. I think it is a tremendous opportunity for us to think about this celebration as a free one, uh, and, and especially on top of the increased anxiety that folks are sitting with and uncertainty, uh, going to pr quietly contemplate and enjoy the beauty of our mom show would be, uh, I think, uh, a gesture of goodwill, a gesture towards people's mental health, and I think uh, a celebration of the fine work that our horticulture staff do on an annual basis. So I'm pleased to second the motion. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ferguson. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A question through to staff, I guess to Craig Burdock. Craig, since the writing of this report, the new uh, limits on crowds come in, we're only allowed to uh, have 10 indoors. So how can you practically run a mum show now with only allowing 10 people in at a time? If Craig's not there, maybe we could go to Sam. No, Craig's there. He's just uh, sorry, Councillor Ferguson. Uh, through the chair, Craig Murdoch, Director of Environmental Services. Uh, we have checked with the restart committee today and with public health, and we understand that the restrictions that were announced on Saturday by the provincial government specifically relate to private functions. And given that this is a place of business and that we have controls in place, we'll be permitted at this time to continue. Okay, so with a reduced scope of the MUM show this year. Um, how can you keep that uh, two meter social distancing then? I just want to make sure we're not hypocritical. We're, we're telling the public they have to do one thing and we do something else as much as we all love the mum show. 
through the chair, we've done an analysis of the space that we have, and we're pretty conf uh, we are confident that we can maintain the maximum number that we're permitted now, which is 50 people for an indoor okay. gathering. Uh, we will be designing this show in such a way that it's a unidirectional flow so that people can adequately space themselves throughout the show. Generally, without all of the extras, like the children's area and the cafe, people are usually only there about 45 minutes to an hour. So we think with the timed entry, combined with the spacing conditions and the four stickers and things like that that we'll be putting in place, that people will be able to space themselves adequately. Okay, that's all, thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Pearson. Yes, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, I want to thank Councillor Jackson for moving the motion. I too read the report this morning and and um, was mulling over the um, free um, charge, their free admittance to the Mum Show this year, in light of the fact of obviously COVID, but that a number of the um, the the ancillary events that go on around the uh, show, the cafes, the family or egg stuff are going to be um, very restricted or cancelled. Um, you know, I think the mom show is phenomenal. It's, it is truly sad that it's the 100th anniversary and, and nothing that was planned because I know how hard our staff work to put together a phenomenal show. Um, but you know what? We'll just hope that we can come back with bigger and better next year. And I'm most supportive of the, uh, the recommendation by Councillor Jackson. I want to thank him. Thank you, Councilor. Any further discussion on the amendment? I'm not seeing any, so we're gonna vote on the amendment moved by Councilor Jackson, seconded by Councilor Nan. Sorry, alternative, not amendment. So we'll vote on the alternative and then we'll vote on the, the report. So on, is that the correct procedure? Yes. So this is on alternative two of the staff report. All in favor. Councillor Ferguson and Whitehead, have you been able to vote? Thank you. And then we need a second report. Okay, so that, that vote carries and replaces the, the staff recommendation. So we've approved alternative two. Thank you. On to 9.2 then, this is the Hamilton Harbor Waterfront Trail Shoreline Protection. Words one and two, and I'd like to call upon Craig Murdoch, Director of Environmental Services, to introduce the report. Thank you, Chair Danko. So before you today is an outline of a plan to protect the shoreline from Bayfront Park to the High Level Bridge. This approximate two, two kilometer area is very heavily traveled trail. It has approximately 2,500 people that use it per day. And it was badly damaged through high water levels and wind in 2017, 2018, and 2019. In 2019, the city was successful in getting disaster mitigation and adaptation funding, and uh, combined with the city's portion of this program, we have 31 shore protection sites across the city, and the program budget is $30.67 million. We hired a consultant to work for this location, and they developed several design solutions for the trail that varied greatly in cost and scope. So this was identified as one of the highest priority areas for our D DMAF project. And because of the damage that it's, it's sustained in 2017 and 2018, but also to the public use of the trail. So that made it in our eyes one of the highest priorities for this project. Staff wanted to make sure that council agreed with the recommendation, recommended approach because there are four different options. And while council approval is not required for us to proceed, we are seeking direction due to the significant information and the subsequent costs. 
So uh, with me today, as you already know, Cynthia Graham is here, um, Manager of Landscape Architectural Services, and we also have Wes Kindry, the Landscape Architect on this project to help answer questions. Thank you, Craig. Uh, our speakers list, Councillor Farr. Thanks, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for that introduction uh, and a reminder historically, Craig, of what uh, we've had to endure, not just on this uh, roughly two kilometer highly used uh, stretch of trail, but uh, I think the report indicates about 30 other locations across uh, our city and uh, certainly the uh, federal funding that we applied for and successfully received has helped, uh, but we still are taking a bit of a hit. So. Uh, um, we're still needing to budget locally, sorry. I wouldn't call it a hit, I would call it very important work. So uh, through you to Wes, the architect identified. So we had four um, options and it's in the report. I'm actually trying to uh, cursor down to it now, Wes, but why don't you just say why it was we chose this one uh, as opposed to the others, all four uh, as the report indicates, Mr. Chair, have that 50 year lifespan, but there was, a, I think, a pretty good series of reasons why this this uh, particular design was chosen through you to us. Thank you, Wes, on the, the meeting. Yes, yes, I am. Hi, through the chair. Um, my camera's not working, so I'm, I'll speak to it, though. Through the chair, um, the four options that were presented, we looked at um, based on the protection they would provide, the cost to implement them and basically the environmental aspects associated with them. Uh, when we look at option three, it provides a little bit of everything. It provides us a economical or a feasible approach via from the financial standpoint. It provides adequate support for the works being proposed and it doesn't impact our environmental um, potential for any blue bean algae forming within the bay, um, which we have an issue with right now. It also provides an opportunity for recreational use of the revenant that's being proposed where users of the trail could potentially climb onto safe rocks and have that close interaction with the water right there in the bay. Um, when we looked at all four options, option three was the best approach we felt from a, a city standpoint, from recreational use for the trail and for the longevity of the trail as a whole. And from aquatic environmental aspect, West through you, we're good with this option as it relates to fish habitat. I think about the investments council continues to make um, further along the pier, pier five, six, seven, uh, some of the design elements uh, where we took into account uh, quite seriously, the ability for fish habitat, that sort of uh, thing to not only occur, but be enhanced. So along this particular stretch, Wes or Craig or whomever, um, is that reflected in this choice? So yes, when we look at this, um, the revenant that goes into the, the harbor itself will create fish habitat for us and spawning grounds. And we still have the existing fish habitat that was developed in 2000 uh, when the trail was originally implemented where we have the islands and we have some sunken reefs in amongst it. Um, the proposed design will enhance and increase the fish habitat opportunity and the spawning opportunity within the bay. Um, it also makes it accessible for our staff doing it on shoreline works. So maintenance costs or anything to do with maintenance and monitoring is a lot less intrusive than it would be if we were further away from the shoreline. Okay, um, as the report indicates, and I finally found it, page five of eight, second paragraph, this option provides the best balance of cost efficiency with protection of the trail and the shoreline. And uh, as I said earlier, uh, and as the report states, Mr. Chair, I mean, all four were good. Uh, and, you know, credit to the uh, design um, consultant that uh, brought this forward. But, you know, on top of that, that has to be reviewed by experts like Wes and Craig and, 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 um, and others, quite obviously, uh, Cynthia and others. And I appreciate, number one, that they've been engaging with myself on this and obviously the Ward 1 counselor uh, throughout, but uh, that they use their expertise to come up with uh, and convince me that we've come up with the option that provides the best balance to cost efficiency and protection of the trail and shoreline. Ultimately, it's about uh, doing some good work 
uh, prudently and uh, making it safe and comfortable, at least for the next half century for what is the most widely used trail stretch uh, within the urban boundary, I believe, or at least the urban area. So thank you very much to everyone involved. Thank you, Councillor. Further discussion on 9.2? A uh, couple questions for me then. Uh, the Ward 1 Councillor, Councillor Wilson, did pass on along, along a question about the, the habitat, um, whether this particular uh, um, um, design is uh, you know, favorable to the fish habitat in the harbor. I think that's been addressed. And uh, to, to Wes or whoever would like to answer, I guess my question is, I, I'm looking at the drawings in, uh, I think it's Appendix B, as to what this will look like, but maybe you could just give a description to the public specifically. So when this trail is rebuilt, what's it going to look like to the trail user? Uh, yes, thanks, through the chair. So the proposed uh, revenant, which is option number three for us, would typically look, the trail itself will still be a six meter wide trail. And when we look over towards the bay, it'll have an armored shoreline. Now it will use larger armor stone, large boulders that will be strategically placed throughout. Um, and then it'll have flat sections where we are going to call them steps. And that's what creates this stepped revenant. Um, they're basically flat plateaus as you work your way down to the water level. Um, the purpose of those are to help break up the force of the wave action when it comes in. It's been proven that it slows down the wave action a little bit as a rough surface opposed to a smooth surface. And as we go through the trail, as the trail starts to elevate a little bit, that might change in looks. Um, closer down to where the parking lot is at Bayfort Park is where we have the, the lowest elevation right now. Um, our trail will actually be about a meter higher, give or take throughout. Once we get into the detailed design portion, we start looking at statistics a little bit better. Um, but overall, we're gonna be looking at a six meter wide asphalt trail still. Was, the use of the trail will remain the same. It's just that we're going to have a more protected shoreline and it'll have the steps built into it. And from a aesthetic perspective, it's labeled on the drawing as armor rock, but specifically just for people that might not be familiar with that term, what, what will that look like? Through the chair. So when we start looking at the design a little bit further, we hope to go through some modeling exercises to actually do some 3D life size scale modeling. Uh, and when we do that, it helps us show what that shoreline will actually look like for the rock size. So we're looking at rocks that are typically, if you have not familiar with it, about four feet in length, um, typically four feet in length, two feet in height. They weigh about a ton, but three tons per stone. Um, so those are placed intermittently, well, throughout the shoreline with the step portions being a flatter stone that'll be placed intermittently throughout the shoreline and will have access to that via probably steps pending on the height of the actual structure compared to the walkway beside it. Aesthetically, from the water looking in, you're gonna be looking at a rock shoreline from the inside looking outwards. You'll be looking at a, a little bit of a high, a rock wall beside you as you're walking on the trail. And then it will be a gradual slope down to the water depending on what level the water is at. And then we'll be able to fit in some plantings where we can in the Northern section where the trail's a little bit higher. Thank you. And uh, just to be clear, we're talking about quarried limestone, not like um, concrete rubble or anything like that. There'll be um, proper natural looking stone. Through the chair, that is correct. It'll be a quarry limestone or a granite rock from further up north that we've been using on some of our other sites in the area in the city. Um, the granite's a little bit denser of a stone. It's just pending on availability at the time when the works come forward and the density of stone. We have to make sure that that stone is dense enough to withstand the, the onslaught of wave action that we receive in this bay. Great, thank you. Those are all my questions. Um, oh no, I did have a follow-up question to, uh, to either Cynthia or Craig. Just on the, Councillor Farr mentioned the funding of this. I believe it's already in our capital budget, um, the funding. So just wanted to confirm that, that this isn't new spending. We're just confirming the design. Yes, thank you through the chair. Um, that is correct. The uh, uh, report that came forward to confirm the disaster mitigation and adaptation fund um, 
acceptance of the program allocated the city portion of the project into a project ID. So we, the funds are there and available to use. And I think there's a partnership with the federal government. I think I saw you and, and uh, the Minister of Infrastructure down on the shoreline at, uh, at some point. So th there is a federal component to this. Am I remembering that right? That is correct. Through the disaster, through the chair, through the disaster mitigation and adaptation fund, uh, the federal government is providing 40% of the project. The city's share is the 60%, which is sitting in the project ID. Great. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Any other discussion? I'm not seeing any. So on 9.2, all in favor? Oh, sorry. Moved by Councillor Farr, seconded by, what's the second this? Councillor Jackson. All in favor. Councillor Ferguson, are you able to vote? Just give me a thumbs up, Councillor Ferguson. Or if you if you can't hear me, we're gonna mark you as absent. Okay. Thank you, and that carries unanimously on to Notices of motion, are there any notices of motion? Seeing none. On our general information, other business, there are the uh, amendments to the outstanding business list. I need a mover and a seconder to approve the amendments to the outstanding business list. Moved by Councillor Nan, seconded by Councillor Pearson. Any discussion? Not seeing any, all in favor? Councillor Farr, we're seeing you indicating your support. Councillor Pauls, oh, we got you. Thank you, that carries. On private and confidential, we have the closed session minutes from September 11th. I need a mover and a seconder to approve the closed session minutes unless committee desires to, to go into camera. So moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Farr. All in favor of approving the closed session minutes. Councillor Pauls. All right, we've got everybody. Thank you. That is carried. Uh, what a, a good news public works committee meeting today. So this is kind of like a sine wave here. But uh, thank you, everyone. And I need a mover and a seconder to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Ferguson. All in favor? That carries. Thank you, everybody. Take care.